A very warm welcome to what is the 80th Security Thought Leadership Webinar. And for those of you who join you regularly, you'll know that every Tuesday and Thursday, we've been here debating a topic of central importance to the security world. And the idea of thought leadership is that we critique today in order that we may get a better type of security tomorrow. And the topic today is a special one because we're talking about Germany. And uh, the title of the webinar is Germany and the security's response to COVID-19. What have been the learning points? And uh, Germany's have been in the news. It's been seen as being one of the countries that's been very good at tackling the virus. What about the security sector? How has that been performing? Uh, and straight after the webinar, straight after, we'll be presenting the 2020 German Outstanding Security Performance Awards. There are four categories, Outstanding Security Team, Training Initiative, Partnership, and Lifetime Achievement Award. So first of all, the Germ first of all we present the webinar, then the German Oscars. So uh, do make sure that you stay around for that. Uh, in a second, I will introduce my panel. Uh, I will ask them in to introduce themselves. Uh, once they've done that, I will then come to them for their opening statement. I will then ask you, the audience, to ask your questions. Can I ask you please to use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen uh, um, and uh, get your questions in early and we'll endeavour to include you. Without further ado then, uh, an expert panel, and I know that people around the world are very uh, um, complimentary about our panellists. We've done it again, an expert panel from across Germany. Uh, we're going to be debate debating what's going on in Germany. Uh, I'll introduce them, then their opening statements. So first of all, uh, Michael, can we go to you? Can you introduce yourself first, please, Michael? Yes. Hello, Martin. My name is Michael. I'm representing Deutschland Sicher im Netz, a uh, initiative uh, under the patronage of the Ministry of the Interior together with uh, big companies in Germany and we are uh, raising awareness for consumers and uh, companies to have a better internet and a better IT security. Well, that's a topical subject. I'm sure that will get crop up later today. Thank you very much indeed. Axel, can you introduce yourself, please? Of course. Thank you, Martin, and good afternoon to everybody. Axel Petri, Deputy Chief Security Officer, Deutsche Telekom Group. Thank you very much indeed. And Hans Wilhelm, can you introduce yourself, please, Hans? Yes, thank you very much for the invitation. Yes, my name is Hans Wilhelm Dünn. I'm the president of the German Cybersecurity Council. Um, it was founded in 2012 together with Arnie Schönbaum, the current president of the National Cybersecurity Authority. And the idea was to translate the topic to a decision maker level. Yes, because we have a lot of sexy cybersecurity conferences, but nobody understands the zeros and ones. Thank you. Yeah, well, conclude me in that. And finally, uh, Volker Wagner. Volker, introduce yourself, please, Volker. Yeah, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Volker Wagner. I'm chairman of the ESW, the OSPAS partner organization in Germany. Uh, ESW stands for Alliance for Security in Industry and Commerce. And additionally, in my day-to-day -day job, I'm responsible as VP security in BSF Group uh, for the security of the chemical company. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, without further ado, our opening statements, same order. Michael first, your opening statement, please, Michael. Yeah, thank you again. Um, yeah, my introduction statement uh, is uh, close to the topic of the day, which is a kind of relation between Corona and uh, the cyber security topic. And uh, this leads me to a, a very new study that we just released, the DSCN Praxis Report, IT Sicherheit at Mittelstand. And we have a big tabloid in Germany, the Bild Zeitung. It's, it's something like the sun in, in Britain, I, I suppose. And they put the headline on their papers that was called the Corona crisis is becoming a cyber security crisis. And the reason for that big headline in this uh, tabloid was that our, our study has found out that 46% uh, of all companies in Germany have reported IT security incidents like cyber attacks. Uh, 46%. This is uh, almost the half of the companies in the last months since the Corona crisis. Also, 12% have uh, reported existing problems, like problems that they fear the existence of the company uh, um, could be um, is 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 uh, on 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 the is threatened by cyber attacks and other numbers that were really. Um, 
really um, interesting. So, um, but that was not all. The other interesting thing was that um, companies, which is also a good news, becoming more and more digitalized. That means that the risk of cybersecurity uh, obviously is becoming is becoming uh, heavier. Um, it wouldn't be also interesting and traumatic if the companies now would have reacted in a way that is rational. So if they would have reacted in a way that means we're doing more. And um, maybe there's a parallel to the uh, corona crisis again, but uh, indeed with the cybersecurity it became obvious that they don't do enough and they do even not more than a year ago uh, now in this special times. Um, I give you just one more number that um, 47%, uh, so uh, again, of almost the half of the companies that we measured uh, don't do any like awareness training for their employees. So this is just one number because I only have three minutes, but to sum it up, we have in a situation now at the Corona times um, that reminds me very much to the Corona because we have a big risk that is so obvious and so many companies can see it virtually. They have existing um, uh, angst, but the reaction is not so that you would expect it. And what makes so interesting from our point of view is that you have the measures, you have the possibilities to react in a good way. We have all the measures and the solutions to uh, get the problem under control. But uh, that is, I think, that what we have, have to talk about today, how we can achieve to get the 100% from the companies to make it better and uh, not just to a few. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. Without further ado, I'm going to go on to Axel. Axel, your opening statement, please, Axel. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, my opening statement will uh, circle around the three O's, uh, if I name it that way. So the first thing what impressed me very much personally was the, the open mindset that I encountered within security and also within our company when it comes to dealing with the challenges we had. Yeah, so uh, we had so many people at uh, our company that wanted to make sure that we maintain the network for our customers. And uh, they have been very dedicated on, on that. Uh, and uh, by this, it was also able for us by having flexible solutions, open-minded uh, solutions, really to bring uh, worldwide around 200,000 people uh, to working from home quite fast, 80,000 alone in Germany, even our customer service with 16,000 people. And this was only possible because we had this open mindset with the people. And we've been talking about flexible solutions, uh, adaptive to the situation without uh, losing the risk out of sight uh, and not that much focusing on rules or something else that would be uh, probably the first approach. Second thing, uh, the second O is opportunities. So what I learned and what I didn't expect, to be honest, is uh, that we as security, not only in my company, but in many other companies, uh, really uh, took the opportunity to prove our value in that regard. Yeah. So I think security has been the spider in the web in the companies uh, using the existing management tools and processes like BCM and moderating the entire uh, topics and, and things that had to be done in, in the companies um, and which uh, was very well perceived by all colleagues, by the management levels and brought security really up in the perception uh, within the companies. Uh, and this is something where, where everyone can be very proud of that we reached this. And the third O is uh, the O for optimism, uh, besides the fact that we all hope uh, to, to get uh, rid of this uh, situation uh, as soon as possible, but the optimism in that regard, uh, from my perspective, is um, in a sense of security, because talking about the perception um, and the uh, good uh, successes we had uh, over the last month, I think this is where we should build on, where we definitely also uh, should maintain the good connections we established to the business, we established to our uh, company leaders. And additionally, and this is probably also uh, chiming in with what Michael said, also uh, taking into account the uh, cyber topics in that regard uh, because also uh, with working mobile uh, uh, cyber is getting more and more important and also some other topics for example uh, for for us in Deutsche Telekom the Corona uh, Warn app uh, where we have been responsible for security also something that has been very important and a, a huge step forward uh, over the last uh, months thank you thank you thank you very much indeed Axel. some uh, wonderful points there appreciate it Hans Wilhelm over to you your opening statement please Hans Wilhelm 
Yes, thank you very much. I heard a lot of very good points from uh, Michael and Axel, and I think one is clear. Um, we have to say um, goodbye from the picture of a, a, I would say, central control point. Yes, the future will be um, different control points and the, um, the old hierarchies we know from our office environment um, doesn't work. And I think if I look to the um, um, study from Cisco, the Europe study, only 8% want to work every day in the company office and 87% want more personal responsibility and the possibility to decide where and when they work. And um, I think that is not easy for us because um, the people are responsible at home. They have to, to work with the, um, with the laptop, with the mobile device, together with the kids, homeschooling and so on. And um, I think, um, uh, we, um, we have to implement a lot of awareness and um, we need tools, yes. It's not possible to educate a lot of cybersecurity professionals and um, that is a reality. And um, I think it's a perfect time to speak about it because now we can change um, the strategy and um, I speak with a lot of our members um, it is a central um, key point um, to say, hey, um, the future is at home. And um, um, I think we have to, to respect it. And, um, but I think we need um, a lot of help in this environment. And um, I think we need a, the implementation of a consistent um, IT security solution. And uh, we need um, adequate um, access control and we need qualified employees. Yeah, I think that is, is, is an essential point. And um, we have to generate new education models. We have a lot of good guys outside and we have a fight for talents and we need round about um, 4 million people worldwide. And um, that is the problem we, we need I think more intelligent education models. And, um, and if you go to the street, you can speak with a lot of people and they have the problem, hey Hans, I have not a certification. It's not possible for me to work in the Bayer AG, for example, yes? And I think that we have to change and that is the only chance we have in this field. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget the audience, if you'd like to ask a question, use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen, get it in early. And as soon as we've um, finished the discussion, we'll, as soon as we've finished the opening statements, we'll come to, the, to you for questions. So a final opening statement then, Volker Wagner. Yes, um, I think uh, the week before Christmas, we all can state uh, it was a very demanding year. And usually in this time, some days before Christmas, um, we feel jet lagged, we feel exhausted because we are at the end of another uh, demanding and challenging year. I think this year was in a bit a way, um, in, in a way, other, uh, another way of demanding. I remember when COVID-19 started beginning of this year, first we had to deal with security um, with the experts because we had a lot of stranded people anywhere in the world and to have to bring our people back. Um, then we had to start with our emergency and crisis management and business continuity management, as Axel mentioned. And then we had to execute a lot of controls. And I would say this was a bit the year of the controls of security, especially if it comes to the so-called AHA regeln. We name it EHA rules in Germany. It stands for keeping social distance, keeping uh, wearing masks and um, in using hygiene measures. We had a lot of controls um, in our companies uh, or on the, the entrances of our sites. Um, this was part of the of the daily work. And then we faced the cyber attacks, these hacks, um, and uh, especially in the area of the ransomware, um, the criminals, um, they tried um, to attack um, this home office environments. Um, for me, this new normal um, faces uh, maybe three, uh, maybe five major trends, um, I would say. The first trend is um, 
that we can see it's a lose-lose game. Uh, so all states, all companies lose in this uh, crisis. Um, uh, there are some winners for sure, but overall it's a lose-lose situation. But we can see that market leaders, and this applies for me to states, to uh, um, uh, companies as well, uh, so as well the public as the private sector, that uh, the market leaders and the stronger states, they become relatively stronger. Um, uh, this has probably a long-term uh, or mid-term uh, implication on the geo uh, strategic political landscape and um, this applies to security. The second major trend is that political tensions, uh, political tensions increase. Um, we can see this uh, uh, in the dispute be between US and China. Um, so COVID was a kind of an accelerator uh, in this struggle. And we can see it in the EU if you think about the debate of the funding of the economic um, uh, countermeasures to overcoming the COVID crisis, uh, there was a big debate between the uh, states from the northern and from the southern part um, of Europe. Um, so we can see there is um, an increased tension which applies probably to security in the midterm as well. Then we can see that um, trend number three that we have a kind of a misuse of security control for political reasons in some systems. Um, so video observation, um, border controls, access controls have been misused or um, used the usage of the military uh, forces uh, for uh, demonstration uh, for uh, interior aspects. Um, this happened and maybe this will, this will happen again. And then we had uh, um, like uh, Michael elaborated and, um, and Hans Wilhelm, uh, we saw more and more um, uh, cyber attacks on the digitization and the uh, home uh, office environment. And I think there is one impact that the perimeter protection as um, a kind of the first layer of our security concept, uh, concept that all the devices, all the desktops, all the, the notebooks, they are in the perimeter of a company's network this paradigm, this will be, um, this will be not valid in the future anymore. So we have to, we have to rearrange the, the security set and, uh, settings that um, our organization, our networks will be more and more hybrid. And aspect number five, um, and I think this applies to politics, but to security as well, and to, to leadership in companies, uh, leadership is essential. Um, we can see that on a state level, but in companies as well, if uh, leaders are consistent in their messages, especially in emergency and crisis management, these companies, these states, they can deal with the situation, all suffer, but um, at the end, um, 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 if you want, to, if you want to, to have a, a more stable situation, then it um, applies to leadership uh, to a big extent for my recognition. Um, so, my deepest gratitude um, goes to all the security leaders and all the staff um, for their passion uh, to guarantee safety and security for all of us. I think this was a, a very, a very, very demanding year for many security professionals. And um, so my applause goes uh, to the whole, the whole community. Thank you very much indeed, Volker. Some interesting points from our panel, as always. Okay, we'll uh, um, say to you all, if you'd like to ask a question, use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen, and uh, we'll endeavour to come to you. Michael, let me come to you first, if I might. Uh, um, Rachel Lawyer, who's going to be our first panellist in uh, uh, 2021, by the way, who's uh, going to be speaking about ESRM. But um, Rachel Lawyer has asked the question about this working from home and uh, the implications that it's going to have on security. Now, you, you provided some very damning statistics on the inability of businesses to protect themselves. Of course, this working from home uh, consequence has enormous implications, doesn't it, in terms of businesses being able to protect themselves and individuals being vulnerable uh, um, in that environment. Can I ask you, Michael, to put, give me a point? Why is this so difficult? What's the barrier to doing a better job? Michael, if you wouldn't mind first. I, I would suppose that the lack of preparation is the main problem here. Uh, there were uh, millions of uh, people now working from home and there were no time to prepare in terms of data protection issues, in terms of security issues. And after all, it's a business who count, which counts. And I think in, in many terms, uh, the, 
uh, companies thinking that they have to keep running their business in order and not to uh, and, and forget about some IT security issue. That is something that our study also showed that they have uh, done less in, instead of more in terms of IT security. This is why I would like to introduce a, 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 a suggestion for a solution for the um, problems that have been described um, also from Hans Wilhelm in terms of the educational, new educational uh, things that, that he has suggested. I would, I would say that all we need is more kind of support infrastructure that really uh, uh, arrives and reaches the companies. Uh, we need it. Uh, all over the country, all over Europe, to, to be honest. And we have to reach the small and medium-sized companies, not the big company, they can help themselves. But it's also of, of strategic interest that we reach the, the um, employers and the small companies. And this is something that I would really now, and I do appreciate that we are working on it. We have started uh, with some uh, new projects that are aiming to reach the smallest companies because they are the weakest companies, but they're also crucial for the security. Okay, I mean, Hans Wilhelm, it seems logical to come to you. I mean, um, you spoke about a process of education. Is that it? Is that what we, is that the key focus here? Raising awareness, educating people? Hans Wilhelm. Oh, it's, we have a lot of points. And um, I think um, you spoke about the small, medium-sized companies. Yes, that are the, is the backbone of the German industry family oriented and um, they want to make a good job, but they don't understand anything about the topic cybersecurity. They need around about 200 days to understand that they have an infiltration. And after two days, total fallout of IT infrastructure, you have the first cash problem. And that is the reality. And I think it's not possible, you cannot compare it with a DAX 30 company with their own CSO, with the security officer, with a lot of staff with budget and so on. No, that are small, medium-sized companies. I think we need a mix of different um, measures um, in space of uh, external SOC support from uh, a lot of providers. For example, the German Telecom is, I think, one of the big key factor where, you, where we can work together with big players, but, um, I think we will never get um, a, a CIO in a, in a small, medium-sized, family-oriented company. But um, I think we have a chance to implement awareness, to say, hey, you have a board of directors, and they have to understand that it is a topic. And um, I, was, I, must, I was the last six years in a hospital um, uh, um, uh, supervisory board and um, cybersecurity was the last topic yeah in the end of all the great topics um, in the sometimes 30 hours and that we have to change that we say hey that is a process enabler we need cybersecurity we have a very sexy smart planet with a lot of innovations but it is only possible if we implement cybersecurity and that we understand cybersecurity as an enabler. But normally the people would say, hey, Volker Wagner, hans Wilhelm Dünn, ah, the security guys. Yes, we have the great innovations and they want to stop the great spirit. And I think we have to change it. Okay, okay, well, let me come to Axel and then uh, I'll come to Volker on this because Axel, one of the interesting things that's cropped up in previous webinars around the world is this, that big companies, uh, um, have been congratulating themselves on doing quite well. And yet, isn't it the case, Axel, that by and large, they didn't see this coming. Their business continuity plans weren't ready for something of this uh, uh, magnitude. And that um, they may well suffer um, as a consequence when it comes to the economic hardship that's likely to follow this crisis. Axel, how well, what's your view of this? How well positioned was business continuity in Germany at the start of this crisis and now? Well, to start with the first question, I think uh, if everybody here in the round uh, would be honest and I would ask who expected something like this 12 months ago, everybody who would say I expected exactly this in this extent would lie. Yeah, because we have been always talking about years for the known unknowns, for the unknown unknowns, but uh, 
regarding the COVID thing, we didn't expect something like this uh, to happen and to, to develop that fast. Um, yes, of course, um, uh, as uh, huge companies, uh, as Hans Willem said, uh, we have been prepared. Uh, I can only tell from, from uh, our perspective, um, yeah, we could handle the situation uh, in, in an emergency status. We didn't even have to go into the crisis status in, in our uh, topics here and in our kind of how we are dealing with, uh, with this. But nevertheless, uh, of course, there have been a lot of things that have to be, uh, that, uh, have to be decided uh, at, at short notice and you are not prepared for everything. We are still not prepared for everything in that regard. But I think uh, a good crisis management and business continuity management does not uh, necessarily mean you are aware of every single incident that could come, but you have to have in place the tools and procedures how to deal with that. And this is something uh, what I definitely uh, learned uh, also uh, beyond Deutsche Telekom Group and in talks with, uh, with other colleagues from other smaller or also bigger companies. Um, we learned a lot about our tools, if they are working or not, and what we should do and use this as an opportunity in that regard is really to uh, take a look back and uh, review our processes, procedures, our tools to be better prepared for the next thing that will be coming because there will be one next thing, hopefully not in, in that extent that we learn, but it's still about uh, being prepared from a procedure and tool perspective and not for a single incident because the incidents will are, are not foreseeable in uh, which uh, manner and, and uh, which extension they will uh, happen. Okay, thanks, Axel. Uh, Volker, let me come to you. And uh, we've discussed this on a previous web webinar, Volker. I mean, one of the uh, things I'd like to ask you specifically now, Michael Gibbs, a previous uh, webinar um, uh, panelist, um, and he's also going to be on in the new year. Uh, Michael has asked the question that in America, COVID 19 has given rise to uh, uh, right wing groups, they're surging. And yet, that doesn't appear to have happened in uh, Germany. You raised the political situation at the start, Volker. Any thoughts uh, in response to Michael's question about why that should be the case? Um, uh, it's certainly an interesting uh, uh, problem for America and uh, not a nice one either. Volk, your thoughts? Um, unfortunately, um, um, Martin, I cannot confirm that we have a really different situation in Germany. Um, so uh. the right wing um, organizations, they try to hijack uh, this uh, COVID-19 protest movements. Um, uh, especially in the social media in Germany too, but we had some mass demonstrations uh, in the major cities, uh, mainly in Berlin, and um, they have been um, compromised to some extent by right wings as well. And we faced especially right wings attacks, including killing of uh, political representatives this year, um, um, uh, based on this on 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 a mixture, I would say, um, on COVID. Um, uh, um, resistance and, and right wing ideological. Ideologic, um, so, um, yeah, we, we have to take it serious. And I think actually um, uh, we were a bit too slow to recognize this. Uh, uh, this was, um, they ha we have some indications in the springtime about this and, um, and it took us, it took us too much, too much time um, really to um, um, to um, um, to fight against this. Uh, just recently in the, um, in the city which is named Leipzig in the eastern part of Germany, we had a mass demonstration as well and, and, um, and really sure problems because the police was not able to stop, um, to stop this, um, um, this uh, right wing activism uh, because they had been understuffed on this day. And this shouldn't, this shouldn't happen in, in, in a country like in Germany because we have the financial funding for the police. We have the resources. Um, um, so this is ser seriously a problem for us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Volker. I mean, it's interesting. You, you mentioned in your opening statement about mm. uh, um, uh, the context for this. And it's been cropping up in other webinars too about how these uh, are leading to all sorts of yeah. social tensions. Interesting and, you face it. And, and may, may I at this point, and this yes. is uh, what we face more and more hybrid uh, security problems, uh, mixing real physical um, and, and real um, attacks like really terrorist attacks or criminal attacks and cyber attacks, especially related to social media and a lot of activism, uh, which we have seen in the ISIS terrorism. Um, this is now part of the, um, the activism in the, the right wing area as well. Now, so we have to take it serious, absolutely. 
Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for your question, Michael. Uh, 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 Michael, Michael, uh, let's come back to you. Um, a question from Simon Chan, and it's, a, it's an interesting one running through Simon's question. Is this area about collaboration within the security sector? Uh, Michael, through in, in, the, in the world of cyber, one of the obvious sort of reference points is to say, have the cyber security sector associations stepped up to generate the sorts of collaboration and learnings that could have an influence on practice? Uh, Michael, I'll come to you first and I'll come to Hans Wilhelm second. Michael. Well, this is a very good question. I think what uh, the problem is, and, and then I would answer your question first of all with a no, uh, is that we have a structural problem with IT security. The structural problem is that on the one side, you can't earn money with it for, with many companies. Most of the small, medium-sized companies uh, it's not attractive for Deutsche Telekom to some extent. That is, as, at least if you talk about the smallest companies, you have like kind of product that will good, have good, do good help, but for many of companies, um, they're not so attractive. On the other side, the companies are telling me, it's for us not attractive to invest into IT security because we don't get any benefit from it. So there needs to be a kind of a collaboration uh, network, I would say it, that to overcome the structural problem that no one really cares about the uh, lack of IT security with a lot of companies. And um, on the other side, uh, the, to, to raise the demand for IT security. And this is why I come back to the um, idea of uh, more uh, support infrastructure. It seems not so sexy as Hans Wilhelm may might say, but it's the opposite of it. it. It's really difficult to talk and to start the communication with so many companies to explain that there are already solutions from all companies to protect their, their business from cyber attack. And I think what, what your question is, um, do they, the association go into the right direction? And I would say yes, if they emphasize the, the, the um, power of communication to explain how to implement security, to explain that they are benefits from using IT security to so many companies. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and the money doesn't come from the companies, it probably comes from the state. So there is a responsibility uh, from sides of the states. And this is maybe also a topic of this panel here, who has to take responsibility to overcome this. And I wouldn't say that this is especially something that the associations have been working on enough so far, but they are doing okay. it now. Thank you. Hans Wilhelm, do you think, uh, um, I mean, you raised the issues that SW, uh, um, small medium enterprises don't understand. Do you think there is a role for better collaboration across the security sector to help solve this problem? Can I, can I be um, specific, Hans, because I want to move on to another question. Yeah, I think that is a very big challenge. But if you see at the moment, we have an IT security law. Sorry, the first step was in 2013, 14 pages. Now we have run about, I don't know, 200. And we have run about, 27 hours to make a report about it. And now we have Christmas time. And I think that is a big problem because um, we have to include all the different stakeholders. And yes, in Germany, we have a critical infrastructure sector. We have 1,948 hospitals. We have 900 small, medium-sized energy suppliers. And nobody is embedded really. And that is a problem. And if you want to make an offer and to say, hey, we are the state, we have a BSI, we have a Ministry of Interior. Yes, that's great, but it's nothing at the moment. We have no real information exchange platform. It's need, we need a lot of people, a lot of money. And um, yeah, please go to a normal um, energy supplier. They all, they all have to implement an ISMS system, the ISO 27001. What do you think? How many of these small, medium-sized um, uh, uh, companies have implemented? 6%. And you need around about 16 months for implementation. And uh, you ask them, hey, do you have an IT um, process, an IT security process, anything? No, we, we have no IT, but we have 3,000 employees. And I think that is a big problem that we have a lot of regulation that we have IT security laws and so on, 
but um, we have no real support and we have a big problem with our federal organization with the 16 states with a big asymmetric setting. It's very easy to hack a German hospital. And I think the decision maker, they need the pain. Yes, they, 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 they have a big problem to translate the topic to the decision maker level. And I would say they don't understand it as a risk management task. And um, that is a big problem. And um, we have a lot of stakeholders and at the moment, we are very lost. And if you see our current IT security law 2.0, sorry, then you know what I mean, yes? Okay, thank you very much indeed. In fact, that so uh, leads me perfectly, Axel, into the next question. Dennis Shep, who's actually a panelist on Thursday, would you believe, um, has got a question I was gonna ask you and Volker, Axel, actually, funny enough, which is what's the number one take home security COVID success that Germany can share? And I think this is important, actually. I'll tell you why, because outside of Germany, I think people look at your country and look to it as uh, uh, having done quite well. Axel, your thoughts, then Volker. Yeah, well, a great, great question. I, I saw this in the chat and I was hoping not to be the first one to have to answer it, uh, to, to have some, <laughs> some time more to reflect. So uh, thanks for putting me on the spot, Martin and Dennis. Uh, no, that, it's it's fine. So I will probably enlarge the question a little bit uh, so as, as takeaways. So, and this is my, my personal uh, um, perspective on this. Uh, I think what, uh, what was really... Uh, going well and and Volker already touched it at the very beginning um, was the, the leadership topic also from a political perspective yeah so uh, we we tried to um, somehow tackle it from a um, scientific perspective also yeah so me personally I'm quite happy that we have a chancellor who uh, is uh, coming from the scientific area because she could not only understand all these things behind she could also explain it to the people yeah so this was uh, great when she was talking about exponential functions there are just a few leaders in the world where I could expect that they are able to do this and to be transparent uh, to to the people and this transparency was was very helpful because uh, in, in my personal perception uh, this led to the fact that people were willing to follow these rules at the very, very beginning so I'm speaking about March April so it became worse over the last uh, weeks and months uh, because the transparency got away and, and people are not willing to follow any longer. So transparency and explaining things to the people. And from a security perspective, uh, I think this is not a pure German topic, but what I learned uh, in, in uh, many organizations is um, if we are able to do something, then it is working together in a crisis mode. Because if you are in a crisis mode, you are not thinking any longer about any political fights between departments, between competitors, if you talk about uh, the, the industry, you are in a solution driven mode. And as long as we are in a solution driven mode as security and really focusing on, on these topics, then we can, can be successful. And uh, the challenge is going to be how we can take up this mood and, and this uh, open mindset I was talking uh, about at the very beginning, also in the hopefully soon coming peace times. Really interesting. That was very good off the cuff, Axel. Volker, same question to you, and I think it's an important one that many people will be interested in. Your thoughts, Volker? Yeah, my simple answer is uh, it's because we are Germans, and this means we are <laughs> very, very disciplined, and we are used to obey two rules. So um, I think this is typical German, so we are process-orientated and we obey two rules. Um, so additionally, I would say uh, we didn't suffer so much from the European financial and economic crisis. So we don't have this depth in, um, in, in, our, in, um, in our companies and, um, and uh, in our governments um, as our European friends, especially from South, from South Europe. So uh, we have a better financial funding and backing of the government and the companies. I think this is essential. And if you are financially healthy, you can better fund uh, your um, your health system. Um, so we have a better funded and organized health systems as many other countries because they couldn't spend so much government government um, um, money in the last years um, in many European countries uh, in hospitals and so. Um, so we are in a in a be better status. Um, and um, uh, maybe thirdly, um, based on this process orientation, we have quite 
organized a secure system, which is sometimes com complicated because of the, the federal system and uh, not everything can be decided uh, by our chancellor. But um, at the end, if it comes to, um, to situations like in the last week, uh, where, where the whole country decided to go on a lockdown um, starting this week, um, um, the decision and policy makers are quite clear in this. Um, so at the end, it's probably the discipline. Thank you very much indeed. And a really interesting answer, actually. Right, well, I'm going to ask all the panel one final question because we're running out of time. I'm going to put all this question to you. And Rachel has got uh, a really interesting one, which is uh, um, we see the German response as a sort of model point of view. What are the lessons that you think you could pass to other countries about this specific point, about how you effectively engage with companies to protect citizens? So I'm going to ask you for 30 seconds each. That's all I'm going to allow you. It's a difficult question. Michael, yours first, please. Well, I hope they got your answer right. But uh, what I would say is that um, um, I don't take your answer in this way because we didn't go through the crisis very well. If you ask the pupils, if you ask the, the, the owners of the small shops, they have a big lockdown now for the next weeks. And uh, I, I wouldn't uh, take the answer that we went through it well. So I would really say also to other countries, if you think you're doing well, because some numbers put into the right direction, ask it twice whether you are really doing well and don't feel safe until you don't really know it and until you really know it. And maybe that's the, again, the metaphor for the IT security. Maybe we think that we are secure because we don't see incidents, but maybe we are not secure. And this is why I would again come back to my first point. Let's talk about the way how we really can make companies secure and the country secure by helping all of the smallest companies in the country because they may think they are, they are secure and they go through the home office story very well, but they don't. So this is my lesson learned to other people and countries, whatever you like. Um, ask it twice whether you are really doing well and think about how doing it better because we didn't do it well in, you, in terms of how we do it, how we stand there today. We could have done much of things better. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to push you. Uh, Hans Wilhelm, just 30 seconds, please. We're running out of time. 30 seconds, Hans Wilhelm. Yes, I agree to Falker. We have a good discipline in Germany, but I absolutely agree to Michael because we have big chance. We, are, we have a federal structure and we need more micromanagement. At the moment, we have a lot of chances and they go away. And we had a lot months of time and we did nothing. And um, I think we need more micromanagement here in Germany. And um, that is the only chance we have. And we have the base for that. Thank you very much indeed. Axel, let me come to you. Uh, um, uh, key, key lessons learned, Axel. Key lessons learned. What uh, for me, it's uh, we, what we need is uh, on, on every level between companies, government, uh, and, and uh, also associations, solution oriented cooperation without any silo thinking. Uh, as long as we have something like this, uh, this works out very well. Unfortunately, and uh, this is the bad news going out to our non German friends, uh, we are also not perfect in that. We are far away from that. Hans Wille mentioned the IT Security Act. Uh, this was not a uh, good example of cooperation and also. So all these uh, discussion fora uh, that we have, uh, they are too much. We have to focus uh, ourselves and uh, um, yeah, so get rid of uh, old habits um, to, to come to solution oriented um, uh, um, solutions. Yeah, sorry for the wording. <laughs> okay, uh, actually just one final point, very poem. five seconds answer Axel. What's the main barrier to getting a focus on um, uh, uh, solutions. What's the barrier there? Why is that not obvious and easy to do? Egoism. Yeah, okay, thank you very much indeed. Volker, final comment from you, please. Volker, just 30 seconds if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, three points are essential from my perspective. Number one, emergency and crisis management. If you don't have it, um, organize it. Um, you need it in the future again. Secondly, we learned that digitization and introducing home office helps quite a lot. 
sending 15 million German people into the home for office was a great achievement. Let's do now the second step and make the home office secure. So uh, cybersecurity is the next step from the digitization. And number three, controls, controls, controls. Controls are sexy, even if they are not perceived, but if you want to overcome a security or safety threat, you need controls. Uh, let's bring it to the awareness of each and every one that we need controls. Oh, thank you so much. That was absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating insights. I must say, when we go to individual countries and we get these sorts of uh, discussions going, it's a, a, a real, uh, real insight. So thank you so much to my panel for their views. Thank you also, I have to say, to uh, the audience for the questions. I am so sorry we didn't get to all the questions, but uh, um, that's the nature of the beast. But we will, we will come back to it, I'm sure. We're going to uh, uh, um, uh, have other days when we'll uh, ask the question again. Um, I'm going now to go to something very, very, very important. I'm going to go to the, uh, um, uh, to the German, German Ospers today. And uh, one of the exciting things about um, the Ospers is what we do all over the world is that uh, we, we have all these, we have all these uh, countries doing the Ospers. And one of the key things is that in every country is exactly the same. What we're trying to do is make this a world worldwide event so that uh, when you win in one country, you win in other countries too. So, uh, um, and here's the interesting thing. As we speak right now, there are people all over the world listening in all these countries, waiting to see who's won. Uh, so uh, um, that's where we are now, and there'll be more in 2021. Stand by for, uh, um, for, for more countries. Um, this year, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Germany, we've only got uh, three categories plus lifetime achievement. We've narrowed it down because, of course, we're, we're going virtual. A very grateful thanks also to our, um, our virtual our partners, uh, ASW. It would have been a live event, and it would have been there, uh, unfortunately, because of things we've had to postpone that. And to Edith Cowan University, based in Australia, uh, global, uh, globally having a big significance on security education and training at the university, they're our trophy and certificate sponsors. We're very, very grateful to them. Uh, um, um, also, uh, uh, what we must have a big thank you to all the supporting associations. These are important to the Ospers because these are the group that nominate the judges. And it's very important, we as the organizers don't nominate the judges, the judges come from the associations. And uh, um, I'm very, very grateful to them and also our judges. Now, these are the names. Now, this is what I wanna say to you around the world. If today you're successful, then it was my idea. If you do not win today and you're a finalist, I'm afraid these are the judges. Uh, seriously, they are fantastically dedicated, fantastically enthusiastic, uh, and I'm very grateful to them for uh, playing a part. So, um, uh, um, and, and some of those judges will be assisting me in presenting the awards today. So thank you very much indeed. If you want to um, use uh, social media during the award ceremony, uh, use these hashtags, please, and this website. And one thing we will be doing is we'll be putting summaries of all the winners on, um, on the website afterwards. So they're being announced for the first time today. Uh, uh, until today, no one knows who the winners are. So first time, and you will see them uh, 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 on the website straight afterwards. But please use those hashtags if you want to promote them and wish them well uh, during, the, during the awards. So without further ado, let's get going. And the first award we are presenting today is Outstanding Security Team. And this OSPA recognizes teams in the private, public or voluntary sectors. That is those who've contributed to an improvement in the overall performance of the organization in a definable way. And over to our BSI representative judge, Dr. Gunther Welsh, to announce the finalists and the winner. Gunther, over to you. Thank you, Martin. I am delighted to announce the finalists of the Outstanding Security Team Award. First team is Deutsche Telekom. Second team is DLR Krisenstab. And the third team is Volkswagen Konzernsicherheit. So, and now I'm delighted to reveal the winner of the Outstanding Security Team Award. And the winner is Internal Security of Deutsche Telekom. Congratulations to the team. Congratulations, 
to my former colleagues. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much indeed, Gunther, for that. And many congratulations to the Deutsche Telekom's internal security team. It's considered to be a trendsetter in big data development, both internally and with their international partners. The judges considered their performance to be extremely innovative, long lasting benefits for employee development and indeed for the company. So many, many congratulations. And thank you once again to Gunther for presenting uh, the category. Uh, one thing I would like to say about the judges, by the way, is they all agree to mark to an ethics policy. They all mark independently as well. So um, um, not even they will know uh, all the results until they're released today. So congratulations then, Deutsche Telekom. Let's move on to the second category, and that's the Outstanding Security Training Initiative. And this OSPA recognizes individuals and companies that operate a successful training scheme which promotes outstanding performance and has produced identifiable results in response to an established need. And here, I mean, I'm going to invite Yui Hein, who represented ASIS Germany on the judging panel. He's going to assist me in announcing both the finalists and the winner. Yui, over to you. Thank you, Martin. I'm delighted to announce the finalists and winner of the Outstanding Security Training Initiative. The finalists are Hacker Island Cyber Risk and Information Security from Commerzbank AG. How to start with information security, e-learning campaign from Langsys. And security starts with you, security awareness tool from Volkswagen AG. Now to reveal the winner. And the winner is... Hacker Island Cyber Risk and Information Security from Commerce Bank AG. Congratulations. Well, many congratulations to Commerce Bank AG and the Hacker Island uh, Cyber Risk and Information Security. Uh, uh, um, it offers a different educational format. It's tailored to employees individual learning styles. The judges applauded the creativity humor and innovative teaching tools. So humor, not, nothing wrong with that in making a communication. So many, many congratulations commercial banks and thank you A, for your uh, taking part in presenting the award, we appreciate it. Now our third award is, and our penultimate one, is the Outstanding Security Partnership. And this award recognizes a partnership that is formed on good planning around identifiable objectives designed to deliver specific benefits. It is characterized by good management coordination. I'm gonna ask Robert Killian, representative judge of ACFE, to reveal the finalists and the winner. Robert, over to you. Thank you very much, Martin. I'm delighted to announce this year's winners and finalists of the Outstanding Security Partnership. The finalists this year's are Early Exhibition Detection Tool, IRC Consulting, and the Austrian Police. Awareness Building for Critical Infrastructure, Schleutner AG and Partner, Volkswagen AG and IRV GmbH Drone Innovation Partnership. So let's have a look. The winner this year is Volkswagen AG and IRV GmbH Drone Innovation Partnership. Thank you very much. Now I'm wishing all of you a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Stay safe. Robert, thank you very much. Congratulations to Volkswagen and IAV's product development partnership focus on drones being used to support patrols and other operations. The judges committed the two organizations for being pioneers in German industrial security with their forward thinking and innovative approach. So many congratulations to, uh, to, to Volkswagen and uh, IAV. Uh, fantastic uh, initiative, I understand. Um, thank you once again to, to Robert. Appreciate your input and a very Merry Christmas to you too. Now, here we come to our finally and the highly prestigious accolade, the Lifetime Achievement Award. 
And I'm going to ask our head judge, Holger Wagner, fresh from being on the panel, to work even harder. And uh, he represents the ASW on the judging panel, and he's going to tell us about the award and announce the winner. Volker, over to you. Thank you, Martin. It's me again. And I'm really delighted to announce the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award 2020. And as you mentioned, Martin, this is maybe the most prestigious award category in the whole scheme. And the winner will be listed in a row with very distinguished former award winners, like Jörg Zierge, the former president of the Federal Criminal Police of Germany, or Peter Hall, the founder and publisher of the security magazine WIK. This OSPA recognizes an individual or person who has consistently shown outstanding performance and an extended over an extended period of time. This includes substantial impact to the security sector and setting and driving security standards. My dear guests, it's my privilege and pleasure to announce that the Lifetime Achievement Award, the OSPAS 2020 goes to James Bitt. Maybe you now know it, it's this show. And please allow me to state Chris Schoek and I, we know each other for almost 15 years. And I can confirm that Chris has made his passion to his profession. He has recognized for his campaigns in Germany and in the IT and telecommunication sector, also all over the world. For, I just want to mention four of his initiatives, um, just to give you some highlights. Mission security with the famous James Bitt, um, so you know it from the name, the James Bond name in the cyber sector um, was uh, really, really famous for an awareness campaign in Germany and all over the world. Then he introduced the My Security and Privacy Boxes. He introduced the security parkour and he established a community as the so-called DAX 30 roundtable for security awareness. My dear Chris, my deepest congratulations to you. Um, it's very well deserved, all the best, and thank you so much for your dedicated work for the security sector. Thank you so much, Volker. Just a few more words about Chris then. And as you said, uh, Volker, he's been a major influence over many years. Uh, um, he's formerly a, a consultant and trainer in the modeling and architecture of IT systems. He became CSO at uh, T Systems in 2004 and later executive security manager. Uh, um, he was responsible for Mission Security Initiative 2004, which three years later was awarded in the Baden-Württemberg Security Prize. He managed more than 200 different security awareness initiatives. Uh, in addition, uh, Chris has been participating in specialist lectures around the world, over 150, uh, and he's been very uh, proactive uh, in that in 2006 he co-founded the DAX 30 Roundtable Security Awareness Initiative a scheme which promotes sharing information on good practice and actively recruits young professionals. It is Chris's technical expertise, combined with his openness to innovation and his generosity in knowledge sharing that make him such an admirable figure in the industry. And I believe the wonder of science will enable us to talk to Chris now. Chris, are you on the line? Are you able to speak to us? Chris, can we speak to you? Yes, um, let me see. Mm. I had a little bit uh, problems with the technique, but I made. I don't know if you see me. I've uh, enabled on my iPad the uh, the camera and uh, also the microphone. You hear me? Yes, we can. Ah, that's fine. Uh, thank you very, very much. I'm really. Uh, when I get last week the invitation to attend here, I think, oh, what, what, what the honor and so on. But, 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 Volker, I have to say, hmm, James Bit is going to be retired. At the uh, end of this year, uh, now I got last week from our HR department an information that uh, we, uh, if we keep him or not, and I decided together with my, uh, with Sebastian, the, our uh, security officer of the systems, to uh, give him uh, the well uh, now defined, let's say, uh, retirement. Uh, and uh, maybe you know that James Bitt, uh, now he has really an SAP number, he has a telecom number. It was also possible to, to send encrypted mails because it has my card, smart card or something like this. And all this. And also the, 
the the uh, uh, German police uh, asked me uh, once at, one at a time uh, now uh, if we can get more details about James Bate because in a in an in a incident with a notebook uh, theft uh, there was something and they know James Bate and so it really was in in, in life and um, he was uh, in, he started his. Uh, his career at uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, 2005, by the way. Yeah? So, and it's uh, a long time. Uh, so, and and maybe uh, uh, we had in the beginning also uh, a story from brand management. A brand manager was contacting me and said, "Okay, hey, James Bitt mm -hmm -hmm, has is so strong aligned to James Bond and so on, and we have no chance to." Uh, to do any marketing stronger than then with uh, Loza, the or Formula One things and so on, he said they suggested me to change the this logo to a, to a uh, to a virus or to a bucket or something else. So 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 it has to go undercover like an agent. We we like this uh, very much and uh, uh, now it uh, it was all over. We we promoted him. 2,000 uh, uh, of these figures, you know, it's 1.7 1 meters high and so on, and uh, uh, a black shape and so on. 2,000 of these figures around the world in different areas of, of the, the systems. And um, yeah, it uh, was one of the biggest things. So I'd, I really like it. And But I have to say, uh, I had many, many uh, people who are supporting me in, all, in during these things. It was a kind of teamwork. This, with different people and uh, I found so many many friends all over the world I had in the afternoon a call with uh, some people in the IT area and uh, met again since many years someone in Singapore I met him first in Japan and so, so it's 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 amazing this community and all these uh, uh, these friendships during this uh, contact and so on and the enthusiasm when they are going uh, now to to try to promote uh, security awareness uh, also to the management together with board members is so-called security parkour this is kind of game gamification uh, now and uh, we had so many memories about things uh, with the russian ladies uh, uh, in their high heels over a bluff bluff uh, a bluff and hack uh, uh, game uh, which we produce by paper by by uh, uh, some 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 really was cheap things, uh, but was effective, and we raised many things there. And uh, I, I liked this this time very, very much. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks you did it, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, just for you to know that uh, um, not only were you nominated against very strong opposition, uh, all the judges voted independently. So to win, you really have to be very, very uh, distinguished. So many congratulations, Chris, on your achievement. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I will be in touch, sir. OK, that uh, uh, more or less uh, um, is the end of our uh, uh, award ceremony, the German Oscars 2020. Just to say once again, let's um, just nominate, see who the winners were. Uh, many congratulations to you all. I think one of the most important... <laughs> you won against very strong opposition. Uh, um, and so a very, very big thank you and many congratulations to you all. Don't forget the hashtag and the website. Um, these are the uh, hashtag and this is the website. You can find out more about who the, uh, the, the winners are um, and uh, a bit more about why they won as well. Uh, we will be sending the certificates and trophies to all the winners in the new year when uh, they're less likely to get lost in the, uh, in the Christmas post. Uh, so thank you everyone once again who's contributed to this ceremony, to ASW, our event partner, all our supporting associations, all the judges, in particular Volker Wagner, who is the head judge, and to all of you for taking part. Um, I hope you don't mind if I say a special thanks to Hannah Miller, who's uh, organised all this behind the scenes, assisted by Christine Brooks. Uh, what we would finally like to do from all of us here at the Ospers is very much hope to see you in person in 2021 at a physical event. Uh, until then, we wish you a Merry Christmas, a happy, prosperous and peaceful New Year. Many congratulations. And until we meet again, stay safe, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>